Hart gets the tip, and it'll start with Minnesota. The Catamounts are known for their team player-to-player -player defense. And talking to associate head coach Jason before the game, he praised them and their ability to play as a cohesive unit on the defensive side of the floor. Battle will pull up. No good to start from Amaya Battle. Priya inside. Hits it over Mallory Heyer. This Vermont team is taller than the Blue Devil team that the Gophers faced on Monday night. So look for them to make some adjustments on the height inside here in the first couple of minutes. Graholski spins a great finish and a good start for the sophomore. Nice strong move to the basket for Grace. Battle on Gilwee. Vito over to Olsen. One of the words used to describe this Vermont team is disciplined. And you can see that in this first couple offensive possessions. They are very determined and disciplined in their offensive sets thus far. Sophie Hart picks up a foul here. I believe that was a foul on Olsen. It's hard to see with everyone hustling on the ground for the basketball. Battle looking inside to Hart. Sophie Hart will kick it out to Grace Graholski. That one's short. Gilwee looking inside. And an easy finish for Priya to over higher there. Prieta likes to go over that right shoulder in the post, so look for the Gophers to make an adjustment defensively on that. Hart screens for Graholski. She'll drive out to Braun. One more pass to Battle. Got it. Amaya Battle, her first bucket of the game. Great to see Amaya off to a quick start. She struggled a little bit offensively on Monday, going two for eight from the field. So I love to see her getting involved offensively early in tonight's game. Gilwee. Gets it inside to Olsen. And Olsen will finish over Hart. The Catamounts so far have gone inside on all of their offensive sets. We do know that they run a two-post offense, which you don't see very often in today's game. Braun with the tough finish. She just has such a beautiful touch around the basket. She makes it look so easy, whether she's close to the basket or at the logo shooting a long-distance three. Gilwee. We'll step back, and that one's short. Higher will pick up the rebound. That's Mara Braun coming down the other way. Cross court to Amaya Battle, who will take it again. Got it! Amaya Battle, two for two from beyond the arc to start this one off. I do think when Amaya is involved offensively early, the Gophers tend to have a better success at winning, so I love to see her involved early and often. Even though she's point, the team's point guard, I think it's important for her to get involved in the offense as a scoring threat early in the game. Gilwee drives left, steps back. Can't get it to go over my battle. Catherine Gilwee back from an injury that kept her out last season. She was the conference freshman of the year two years ago as a freshman, so I'm sure the Catamounts are thrilled to have her back on the court returning from an injury. Sophie Hart can't finish on that one. It's Vito coming down for the Catamounts. Hansen back to Olsen. Short on that one as well. Battle pulls up. Can't get the roll on that one. Hansen 
quick crossover to get right by Mara Braun and an easy finish all by herself at the rim. Wow, that was a quick, low crossover. So difficult to defend. And Kira Hansen, she was the sixth player of the year in the conference last year. So even though she's moved into the starting lineup this year, she knows a thing or two about giving the Catamounts a boost. Hart can't finish on that one. Vito, quick down, and a quick finish for Olsen there. I'd like to see the Gophers use a little bit more of the shot clock offensively. It seems like they're taking shots relatively quick into the possession. They're not making the Catamounts play very much defense. And I think they might have a better chance here offensively on some better shot selection if they slow the ball down and use more of the entire shot clock. Gil Wee, Olsen will take the mid-range, got that, no one on her, it seemed like. She's a tough matchup. She's capable of playing with her back to the basket in that traditional post position, but she also, as you can see, can shoot those mid-range jumpers. Graholski looking for something. Oh, Battle for drives left. Gophers are a little stagnant offensively right now. You always wonder too in the beginning of the season if conditioning plays a role yep. when you have a lot of play with not a lot of whistles. Take a look at this last. Uh, the Vermont Catamounts with a two point lead over the Gophers here in this first quarter. Look for the Gophers out of this timeout to get Mara Braun involved offensively. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> She's the leading scorer from last year. She had 17 points in the game on Monday night. In order for the Gophers to be successful and win, she has to be involved in the offense. Quick turnover, Mara Braun will pick up the foul. Going for a ball on that possession. I think Stewart kind of forced that one there. Minnesota Gophers with a few substitutes out of that timeout. Taylor Woodson, Tori McKinney, and Annika Stewart, who were able to provide a huge lift in Monday's victory. They had 50 bench points from their bench on Monday night. It was just fantastic to see. It's a big switch for Minnesota from last year. So much of a deeper team this year than they previously were. McKinney down to Woodson. Braun, 10 on the shot clock. There's that tenacious player and player defense that we know that the Vermont Catamounts are known for. Stewart pulls that one up, it's no good. Vito. Erickson. Great pass by Vito, but not able to finish by Lazar there. McKinney drives, can't finish. Woodson offensive rebound. Bucket doesn't go, but she gets the foul. I was just about to say that I wanted to see the Gophers attack the offensive rebounds, and Taylor Woodson was able to do so just as I was about to speak to the importance of dominating the offensive rebounds here. If shots aren't falling, it becomes even more of a priority for the Gophers to attack the offensive rebound and give their team a second chance. Woodson makes the first. Taylor Woodson is a Hopkins High School graduate, had much success there in her high school career. She played her first year at Michigan, transferred back home to the Gophers here in her sophomore season. Great to see her back home in Minnesota again. Gophers picking up with a full court pressure defense, hoping to slow the Catamounts down, getting into that offensive set a little bit. Vito uses the screen. And Erickson will take a deep three that is no good. Good save by Woodson there. 
Braun, one dribble, no good. Oh, board, Tori McKinney. Mara Braun won't try that one. McKinney into Stewart. Finishes and gets the foul. Annika Stewart picking up right where she left off on Monday night when she gave such a great performance off the bench. Annika Stewart, a Wyzetta High School grad, played her first four years at Nebraska and came back to the Gophers for her fifth and final year of eligibility as a graduate student. And so many of these Gopher players played with each other or against each other at some point or for all of their high school careers. So it's cool to see all of them back in a Gopher jersey. Annika Stewart and Mara Brown teammates, excuse me, Mara Braun teammates at Wyzetta High School. Amaya Battle and Taylor Woodson teammates at Hopkins High School. Great shot fake. And now it's out to Erickson. She can't get that one. And Lenz grabs the board over Taylor Woodson. Drive quick pull up is no good from Gilby. Great defense by Amata, Amaya Battle there. Just staying with her on the dribble penetration and then staying straight up and down when she took that shot. Stewart inside. Out to Braun. Woodson will drive. Nothing there. McKinney three. No good. Gilby attacking, out to Lenz, got it. Tied up at 15, under a minute here to go in the first quarter. It looks like when the Gophers sub in Annika Stewart, they're looking for that high pick and roll offense with her and Mara Braun, which allows them a lot of opportunities. Mara Braun to dribble penetrate Annika Stewart off that tough roll. After a quick bucket from Hansen there, back and forth in this last minute. Battle. Great roll by Stewart and an easy finish. Gophers ran that two-person high ball screen offense. We saw that from them on Monday night as well. It proves successful when Annika Stewart is in the game because she's so difficult to fend off that roll. Gilwee at the buzzer is no good. And we are tied after the first quarter of play at 17. Second season with the Gophers. Coach Don Plitzowite in her second season with the Gophers, they were 21 and 16 last season. She is in her 18th season as a head coach, 386 wins and 157 losses. A tough finish down low for Anna Olson. Vermont is showing the versatility offensively so far. They're able to shoot the three, dribble, penetrate, and then they've got that two post offense that is difficult to defend. Stewart no good on the three. Erickson up top. Lens looking down low to Olsen. She'll pull up over Stewart, and it's good. Again, we talked about her versatility as a player. She's able to play with her back to the basket as a true post player, and then also step out and hit that mid-range jumper, which can be difficult to defend from a post standpoint. Lexia Rose out to Grace Graholski. That one's no good. Great board, but can't finish Mallory higher. Erickson. Great denial defense by Mara Braun. Gilwee will drive. Five left on the shot clock. Quick crossover. Sends it out to Lenz. Got it. Oh, just a crusher defensively. I thought the Gophers played great team rotating defense on that last possession. So to hit that three got to hurt just a little bit. 
inside to Stewart. Rose will drive. Sends it out to Mallory Heyer, who cannot hit the three. Vermont is dominating the defensive board so far with 12 defensive rebounds. They're doing a great job of grabbing those Minnesota misses and getting the ball up the court quickly to get their offense started. Gilwee can't hit that time. It's Rose down the other way. Braun out to hire. She'll try again. No good. Again, those quick shots in the shot clock by the Gophers. I'd like to see them make Vermont play a full shot clock worth of defense. Another quick pull up from Olsen. That one almost. Mara Braun drives. Nothing there, back out to Rose. Verholsky barely able to keep a hold of that one. Vermont will be called for a foul there. We all know Grace Graholski for her amazing three-point shooting ability, but you saw her post up there a little bit, which I kind of like seeing her get physical down in the post. Entering for the Gophers, Tori McKinney, Nehemiah Holloway, and Amaya Battle back in. Tori McKinney is a true freshman from Minnetonka High School, coming off a state championship last year as a senior, taking her talents to the Gophers this year. Battle will try from three, no good. It's gonna be an offensive foul. Gophers are just two of 11, 18% from the three-point line. I can't tell if they're relying on the three-point shot because Vermont's man-to-man -man defense is so tough or if that's part of their strategy. It's too early to tell, but it's tough to win a basketball game when you're shooting just 18% from the three-point line. That last foul went on McKinney. Erickson, mid-range, gets the foul. The Gophers have chosen defensively to not show on the ball screens, which is making it really easy for, Mount, for Vermont to come off that ball screen and turn the corner offensively and get a quick jump shot or dribble penetrate to the lane. Minnesota shooting 29% from the field right now. Two of 12 from three. Yeah, they're relying on the three-point shot a little bit too much, I think, in this first half. I'd like to see them do a little bit more inside-outside. Utilize Annika Stewart. Nehemiah Holloway is in the game. She's capable of posting up down low. Here's that two-post high ball screen. Good idea from Battle there, but just too many defenders in the lane for that to be able to happen. Holloway will come out, Sophie Hart back in. Malia Lenz in for the Vermont Catabouts. Giving Anna Olsen a quick break. Battle looking down low to Hart. Little one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Amaya. In and out. Hart had her defender sealed pretty well there, which we haven't seen from the Gopher post so far too much tonight. Sophie does a great job of getting those post defenders on her back and maintaining her positioning down low. Lens to Erickson. Erickson uses the screen. I'm surprised by the pace and the tempo of Vermont so far. They're a team historically that is known to slow the basketball down and they are really pushing the tempo here tonight in the first half. Erickson cannot get that one. Seven left on the shot clock. An interesting shot from her when they had time left. Vermont is shooting 52% from the field. They've gotta be happy with that. 
They do a really nice job of shot selection. They know when to dribble penetrate. They know when to shoot the three. And I think that comes down to coaching. We've heard a lot about how disciplined they are from Coach Elisa Kresge. McKinney gets it into Hart, and she's able to finish with the left hand. Great left hand post move by Sophie Hart. Hopefully that gives her a little bit of momentum down low, gets her going here in the second quarter tonight. There's that high ball screen and roll, and the Gophers are not doing a great job of showing and stopping the defender. The steal from McKinney coming down the other way. Passes down to Hire, who's able to finish. Offense to defense for the freshman, Tori McKinney. I love watching Mallory Hire play. She's just that gritty, aggressive player for the Gophers that does a little bit of everything. You can see her crashing the boards. Defensively, she's all over the place. She's one of my favorite Gopher players. Vito can't finish. Tough shot to shoot over six foot three Sophie Hart. <laughs> Battle right wing. The Catamounts do such a fantastic job of closing out defensively. They've got their hands up, active feet. Makes it really difficult for the Gophers to see the basket. Battle, five left on the shot clock. Goes down into Sophie Hart, who is fouled. Take a look at it again here. Eddie lead so far in this game. It's five right now. What does Minnesota need to do at the end of this first half? I've talked about it a few times, but I'd like to see them utilize more of the shot clock. Slow down a little bit offensively. We do know that Vermont's intense defensive pressure is probably what's speeding them up a little bit and making them a little bit uncomfortably, uncomfortable offensively. Gilwe. Now it's Han. Good cut, good deflection from Sophie Hart there. Great recovery by Sophie Hart. Anna Olsen got in front of her in that basket cut and she did a great job getting her body turned around and getting her hand in the way of the basketball. a fury of screens by the Catamounts on that baseline out of bounds play. Hansen not able to hit there. A tough call. Tori McKinney called for wrapping her arm around in that post up. Graholski in for McKinney. Han. Good job getting through that ball screen by Graholski. Han can't hit on that one. Battle will drive, kick out Grace Graholski. Nothing there. She goes into Sophie Hart. And Olsen will be called on a foul there. I think that was a great offensive possession for the Gophers. They were patient, they shared the basketball. Two personal fouls on Anna Olsen. We'll keep an eye on that as she is such a pivotal and key player for the Vermont Catamounts. Quick step back for Mara Brown is no good. Grace Graholski gets it back over to higher. She'll try it this time. That is off as well. Gophers are still struggling to find the rhythm and the flow offensively from that three-point line. Monica Stewart checking back in for Sophie Hart. Maya Battle picking up full court here, hoping to slow 
down Catherine Gilwee just a little bit. Erickson back to Lenz. She'll drive and is able to finish over battle and higher. Great take by Malia Lenz, reading the defense, knowing she had them on their back and dribble penetrating all the way in for that right-handed layup in traffic. Taylor Woodson coming back into the game, replacing Mallory Heyer. Minnesota still just 30% from the field. And give credit where credit is due. I think Vermont is doing a fabulous job defensively of getting the Gophers out of their offensive rhythm. Battle, a great drive, finishes, and the foul for Amaya Battle. Just a great take by Amaya Battle. She turned the corner on that ball screen, saw an opening, and got herself all the way to the basket with the and one. Battle tonight, eight points, three rebounds, one assist. Hansen, guarded by Braun. Gilby will drive. Travels on the step back. Vermont's offense involves so many ball screens, screens away from the basketball, flex cuts. I think the Gophers have settled in a little bit. They're doing a really nice job of defending that here in the second part of this first half. Battle will pull up again. Amaya Battle. Three of five from beyond the arc tonight. I love seeing her get involved in the offense. The steal from Braun leads to the easy layup, and the Gophers now down just one at the end of this first half. Mara Braun struggling a little bit offensively, so you can see her trying to get herself involved by getting that defensive steal and easy fast break layup. Those two possessions, just a complete change of momentum here. Make that three possessions as Amaya Battle forces the offensive foul. Eight, clock, eight second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. 38 seconds remaining in the first half. 30 seconds in the shot clock. Let's see if the Gophers take advantage and utilize every second they can here on what could be this final offensive set. Grahulski drives, passes down to Stewart who gets the bucket. A great find from Grace Grahulski. Defense shifted a little bit and left Annika Stewart wide open on that weak side. Great job by Grahulski finding her open teammate. Gilwee, five seconds left. She'll pull up and it is no good. And Minnesota, what a last minute and a half of play now leading the Catamounts. They turned up the defensive intensity a little bit in that last 90 seconds, and it, it proved to be great for them. They're up one point, and they've got, I would say, most of the momentum going into the second half. We'll be back for the second half here. We'll see Annika Stewart start this second half instead of Sophie Hart, who started the game. The Vermont Catamounts have two very athletic posts, and I think Annika Stewart just has a better defensive matchup for this team than perhaps Sophie Hart does tonight. It's battle, quick pull up again. Got it, Amaya Battle picking up right where she left off in the first half. Did a great job reading that screen from an Annika Stewart. Took one dribble, saw that the defense faded a little bit into the lane and hit that nice pull up jumper that we know she's capable of. Vito over to Priya. 
Gets Hansen down low into Olsen. She gets it back, turns around, and is able to hit a tough shot over Annika Stewart. Just a tough shot by Anna Olsen. We know that she is a capable scorer. She had 18 points in their first game, their win against Missouri on Monday night. A Monticello, Minnesota native playing in front of her hometown here tonight at Williams Arena. Battle gets to the rim again. She's up to 14 now tonight. She's doing a great job of turning the corner off those high ball screens and getting herself to the basket. Mara Brown there to help Annika Stewart, but fouls. Good idea by Mara Brown. Great help defense, but she could have stayed up and down, up and down a little bit more straight instead of jumping and trying to block that tall shot of Anna Olsen. Olsen, 12 points tonight, six for eight from the field. She gets the second. Coach Don Plitzowite giving the thumbs up call offensively for her Minnesota Gophers. Stewart will pull from three, got it! Anka Stewart, such a versatile player and a great get for this Minnesota team. What a great addition to have her back home for her fifth year of eligibility. Wyzetta, Minnesota native, showing what she can do here tonight. Stewart on Olsen. Stewart fouls, Olsen will head right back to the line for two. So far in the second half, it's Anna Olsen and Annika Stewart <laughs> back and forth here, each possession. Tough couple missed free throws here for Anna Olsen. Braun bringing the ball up the court for the Gophers. Battle flashes, gets it up top. Drives, gets it back to higher. Braun into Stewart, turnaround jumper is no good. Mallory Higher grabs the offensive rebound. Can't quite save it there. Good hustle by Mallory Higher. Gilwe. Good defense by Grace Grahalski on the ball there. Vito. Now driving is Hansen. She can't hit. Grahalski grabs the board. Great defensive possession by the Gophers. Nice help and recover. They knew where the basketball was all times. They did a great job of getting through the many screens that the Vermont offense sets on every possession. A Mal great cut from Higher there. Mallory Higher does such a fantastic job of cutting without the basketball for the Minnesota Gophers. She's got great court sense, court awareness. A little box set here, baseline out of bounds for the Gophers. Look for Mara Braun to come off a screen. Well defended by the Catamounts. Higher inside. Can't get the basket, but gets the foul. Mallory Higher will head to the line. In the second half here, it looks like the Gophers are attacking the posts of the Vermont Catamounts. I get the feeling that Coach Don Plitzowite thinks that if she can get those two posts in foul trouble, her team has a better chance at victory tonight. Higher misses the first. 
Minnesota just one of five from the free throw line so far tonight. Gilwee deflected by Braun. Heyer comes up with it and is fouled. That is the fourth personal foul on Priyada. She's gonna have to come out of the game here. Malia Lentz, who gave them a nice lift in the first half coming into the game for the Vermont Catamounts. And Woodson replaces Heyer and Hart replaces Stewart for the Gophers. Kraholski. It's gonna be an offensive foul on Sophie Hart. Just her first, she was battling down low to establish position in that post. Got just a little too physical. Vito to Lenz. Gilwee will take a three of her own, drains it. Catherine Gilwee, her first bucket of the game, but she's got five assists. She's been a great facilitator for the Catamounts so far tonight. Just one for seven from the field, one for three from three point line. Again, she's coming off a season long injury last year. She missed the entire season after being named freshman of the conference the year prior. Battle down low to Hart. Easy finish over Anna Olsen with the left hand. Sophie loves to go over that right shoulder and finish with her left hand. Great post move by Sophie Hart. Hansen couldn't finish. Gophers coming down the other way. Mara Braun from the arc. Got it! Mara Braun getting going here in this second half. Just her first three-pointer of the game. She's one for two from the three-point line. We know that she's capable of putting up a lot of points very quickly for the Minnesota Gophers. She gets the steal there, picks up the foul. That is her fourth steal of the basketball game. So Mara Braun, known for her offensive efforts, but also quite the defender as well. Couple of substitutes here. The Gophers coming in with Alexia Rose and Tori McKinney. Catamounts subbing in six foot three senior Sarah Lazar. Braun Mar makes the first one. Mara Braun is a 92% free throw shooter. Almost a given at the free throw line. Had that streak last year, was climbing the records of consecutive free throws made in a row. Gilby guarded by Rose. That one is good from Hansen. Tori McKinney got caught a little too deep and helped defense that time and left her player Hansen wide open for the baseline three pointer. Rose to Braun, she'll take that one again. No good. Hansen the rebound. Vito driving out to Lenz. Turnover by Malia Lenz, just getting her back foot on that out of bounds line as she caught the basketball. Rose. Inside to Braun. Taylor Woodson not able to save that one and quick turnover there for the Gophers. Not how they wanted to come out of the timeout. It looks like they were really looking to Mara Braun on that offensive set, but she had 
all of the Vermont Catamounts giving her their attention. So that's a tough offensive play for the Gophers. I think the Gophers have done a nice job in this third quarter of increasing their on-ball pressure, making it a little bit more difficult for Vermont to get into their offensive rhythm and to see the basket. Braun called for a foul after she goes for the steal on Vito. See her kind of link her arm in there at the end. Olsen. Great defensive pressure. Resulting in a fabulous turnover by the Gophers. Braun down to Woodson. Looking into Stewart. A little bit of a mismatch. She's got a shorter Malia Lenz defending her in the post, and the Gophers missed out on that opportunity for Annika Stewart. See Woodson lose the ball there. Go for bench, getting some nice minutes here in the third quarter. Annika Stewart, Tori McKinney, Taylor Woodson, Annika Stewart with the nice right-handed finish. Great roll from her and Amaya Battle, so good at finding her. She's got fantastic court vision. See the pass from Battle. Both teams are shooting the basketball fairly well here in the third quarter. Vermont at 60%, Minnesota at 75%. So quite the increase from what we saw in the first half so far. It's McKinney's third foul. She headed to the bench. Erickson makes them both. Minnesota's lead now five. Again, that high screen and roll between Braun and Stewart with Grace Grahalski waiting in the wings. In case the defense helps a little too much, she'd be open for that three-pointer. Stewart screens for Braun. She'll pull up from the logo. Got it! Mara Braun! Great awareness there by Mara Braun to see that the defense faded back just enough to give her time to get that deep logo three off. It's an eight point lead now for Minnesota. Hansen. Gets it back herself, has to take the shot, can't get the baseline jumper to go. Minnesota coming down the other way. Strong defensive rebound by freshman, or excuse me, sophomore Taylor Woodson, that transfer from Michigan. No good from Braun again, but Woodson able to get the Gophers another possession. A great hustle play again by Taylor Woodson. Woodson drives left, baseline jumper doesn't go. Annika Stewart offensive rebound. Amaya Battle again. Got it! Amaya Battle, her third three of the game. And that all started with the hustle play from Taylor Woodson on the defensive end. Hansen, all by herself, can't hit. Battle pulling down the rebound. Sophie Hart getting ready to check in for the Gophers. Battle to Stewart again. Couldn't quite hold on to the pass. That one slipped away. And Grahulski fouled heading down the court. Great court vision by Amalia Battle. Just a little bit too much Vermont traffic there for Stewart to hold on to the basketball. 
Amaya Battle, such an improved shooter. You look back to her freshman year, she was not comfortable at all from beyond the arc. Quite the change from what we've seen tonight. I guarantee she spent a few minutes in the gym in the off season working on her outside, her perimeter game, and you can tell. Gophers have extended their lead to 10, and I think you can tell they've increased their hustle and their intensity a little bit here in the third quarter. Up and draws the foul. Amaya Battle, 17 points tonight, 7 of 12 from the field. Add on four rebounds, five assists. A great night for her. As one of the juniors and returning starters on this relatively young Minnesota team, you can tell that tonight she's definitely making a concerted effort to be involved offensively versus what we saw on Monday night versus the Central Connecticut State Blue Devils. Gilby. Sophie Hart grabs that one as Gilly just tried to force it inside. Braun drives hard to the rim, can't finish, but Sophie Hart grabs the rebound, gets it out to Woodson. Graholski will take it herself. What no a, good. What a Woodson, great another ball fade. O board. Got it, and the foul. Grace Grahalski with that fabulous ball fake to shift the defense before she took that three-pointer. And then Taylor Woodson just battling inside for the offensive rebound. And that is what she does best. Taylor Woodson is a physical, strong player. And she is known for her mid-range jumper and ability to be physical in the paint. Woodson gets the free throw. A great addition for the Gophers. Spent that year at Michigan, but her role, she's playing her role perfectly right now with this Minnesota team. She is, and she's coming off three career bests on Monday night's game. She had five rebounds, four offensive rebounds, and five field goals made, so she's already finding success here as a Minnesota Gopher. Braun the Steel picks it up, finishes at the buzzer, Minnesota. 60. There in the corner of your screen, you can see head coach Elisa Kresge, a staple of her teams here at Vermont has been the defense. Last season, they had the second best scoring defense in the country, giving up just 52 points a game for the season. As Prieta finishes there, Kresge fourth all time in program wins with 96. She does a fabulous job of getting her team prepared. You can see the discipline that they play with. Everyone knows their roles. Everyone knows where they're supposed to be on the court, both defensively and offensively. Braun no good on that one. Erickson guarded by Battle. Vito. Hansen drives baseline, pulls up, can't hit, gets her own rebound. Vito down to Olsen, excuse me, to Prieta, and she'll hit again. Prieta fired up after two buckets in a row. She does such a great job of getting position down in the post and then has that quick turnaround jumper with the high arc. It's difficult to defend. Woodson in the corner. Battle. Minnesota running out of time here on the shot clock. Just four, three, and great take by Amaya Battle. Great recognition by the junior point guard to know that the shot clock was running down. And that nice left-handed finish. Vito 
uses the screen, will pull up, no good. Woodson the rebound. Another rebound by Taylor Woodson. That's her sixth rebound of the game. Graholski behind the back, out to Woodson. She'll pull up, no good. Sophie Hart's gonna get called for the foul again on that one. Sear so kind of reached her hand inside and over Olsen. Over the back of Anna Olsen. Easy to do when you're reaching for the defensive rebound. Braun, another steal. Down the court, lays it up and in. Mara Braun, 18 points tonight, and that is her seventh steal of the game. She's done a great job in this second half of bringing the energy to the defensive end of the floor for the Gophers through her defense. Really active hands and feet. Timeout here, Minnesota rolling, 62-45. Battle pulls up, no good. Skill we. Guarded tight by Battle. Great on the ball pressure by Amaya Battle. Hansen forced to shoot. And another great stop from the Gophers. Just a wonderful job in this second half of pressuring the Vermont Catamounts into shots that they aren't comfortable taking and forcing them to utilize the entire shot clock, getting deep into their offensive sets instead of getting those easy baskets early into the possession. Gophers being patient here offensively. McKinney drives, will pull up from the elbow. That's no good. Stewart not able to grab the rebound. It's Gilwee coming down the other way. Olsen. Vito into Olsen. Five left on the shot clock. Prieta will take it over Mallory Heyer, who was called for a foul. There's Prieta again with that little turnaround jumper that she's been doing so well throughout the game. I thought on this last possession that Annika Stewart and Mallory Heyer did a fantastic job of working together defensively to defend the post. So it's unfortunate that the possession had to end with a foul in the Catamounts at the free throw line. Prieta can't hit the first one. She's still playing with four fouls. And Olsen with three as well. Braun looking up over to McKinney. She'll take a three of her own. Got it! Tori McKinney! Big smile from Tori McKinney as you see her get her first three points of the basketball game. Tori McKinney is capable of scoring offensively, but one of the things that the Gophers are most excited about with her is her defensive ability. She's got long arms, she's got great court awareness defensively, and they're really excited about what she can bring to the team this year on that defensive end of the game. That bucket from Vermont stops the 7-0 Gopher run. Stewart. Five out offensive set here by the Gophers. No traditional post player in right now. Battle goes inside to Stewart. Be a jump ball between her and Vito just crept in there. 
Nice defensive play by Bellavito, the 5'9", senior being a little bit shorter as Annika Stewart brought that. McKinney will drive. Looks like Vito got a hand on that one. Bella Vito for being a little bit smaller player. She does a great job with active hands, causing a little bit of a disruptance defensively. Lens. Great cut back door by Vito, but she can't finish. Tori McKinney with those long arms that we spoke about was able to recover and cut Vito off from that wide open, what she thought would be an easy basket. Little screen the screener baseline out of bounds play by the Catamounts. Olsen will take the three and it is way off. Great intensity from the Gopher defense forcing that shot. Olsen is capable of hitting that three-point shot, but I think a little bit of fatigue setting in here late in the fourth quarter. Braun forces it inside to Hart, and it's stolen by Vito. Coming down the other way, the Catamounts. Braun <laughs> will take it back herself. Braun drives, saves it. Now Battle uses the screen from Hart. Higher inside to Sophie Hart. What a great bounce pass by Mallory Higher. She got nice and low, delivered that ball exactly where Sophie Hart needed it to catch in the post and be successful going up and getting the foul. her first free throws of the game. Misses the second, Vermont coming down the other way. It's Hansen. Nice job fighting through that high ball screen by Amaya Battle. Great drive and finish from Gilwe. Just a tough pull-up jumper. Grace Grahalski played tough defense on her, but nice finish by Katherine Gilwe. Braun will pull up from three again, drains it. Mara Braun, her third of the night. She does such a nice job of catching the basketball every time ready to shoot. She gets her feet under her, she's got quick hands, she gets her shoulders square to the basket, which gives her unlimited opportunities offensively to do what she needs to do. Gilby looking for Olsen, but Hart, great defense there. Lens drives. Will be a jump ball, great job by Sophie Hart getting her hands in there. See Maggie Sinano, number five, entering the game, a six-foot senior from Watertown, Minnesota for the first time. And Nehemiah Holloway, a sophomore from Eden Prairie, coming back into the game. We saw her a little bit in the first half tonight. Sinano, since last season as a junior, was the longest tenured player on this team. <laughs> Shows their youth. And now in a new role again this year, but Maggie's done a great job playing into what she needs to do. Grholski, the rebound. Freshman McKenna Johnson also into the game for the Minnesota Gophers for the first time tonight. Coach Don Plitzowite comfortable enough with this lead that she's emptying her bench a little bit. Just a great feeling early on in the season, getting some of these players some court time to get some of those jitters out 
early and often. And Kennedy Click entering the game, stepping foot on this court in action for the first time in her career as a golfer, suffered an ACL tear that had her out for all of her freshman season. Another Minnesota player from Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. Again, this Minnesota Gophers roster this year has 11 players from the state of Minnesota on it, which I know the fans love to see. So fun to be able to cheer for your hometown players. And Bryn Senden in as well, another YZ native. So Senden, Braun, and Stewart all played high school basketball together, and now here they are at their home state's college at the next level playing. And for Bryn Senden, playing at the Gophers is a family affair. Both of her parents went to the U, so I know it's a very special opportunity for her to get to be a Gopher as well. That one deflected by the Catamounts, so it'll stay with the Gophers. Click. Spins. Will pull up. Got it! Kennedy Click, her first points as a Gopher. Such a long <laughs> journey for her and the biggest cheer of the night comes for Kennedy Click. It's gotta be a great feeling for her after that ACL injury returning to the court. Lens as the shot clock winds down. Crosses over is fouled. Kenneth Johnson on the floor for the Gophers. Looks like she took a knee as Lens went up for that layup. <laughs> Lens tonight, nine points, two rebounds, and two assists. Three for three from the field, two for two from the three point line. So just a great effort from their sixth man, Malia Lenz, for Vermont tonight. What could be the final possession here of the evening for the Minnesota Gophers? Johnson crosses over. Gets to the rim, finishes, and the foul, Kenna Johnson. Great patience by McKenna Johnson. You saw she had a little hesitation dribble to get the defense on her back, and then she took advantage, went all the way in for the strong left-handed layup and the foul. Han. Lens won't take that one. Back cut by Han. Inside to Risden and she's fouled. Rizin can't hit the first. Gets the second. Still a 22 point lead for Minnesota here. Clock winds down. And a great win for Minnesota tonight. Phenomenal.
எந்த ஐடியில் முன்னாடி ஒரு கிளேஷியர் அக்கௌண்ட் வச்சுருந்தாங்களா அதுலேயே ரெக்வஸ்ட் கொடுத்துருந்தோம் நான் நிறைய அக்கௌண்ட் கை மாற்றிட்டேன் அதனாலதான் கில்ஃபீட் அக்கௌண்ட்லாம் வேறவே பிடிக்கல இப்போ 